Today we're going to talk about blood typing. You probably remember some of this stuff from genetics, but we're going to go a little bit deeper. So I'm going to give you a little bit of history um, to start off with. And this history you don't really need to know um, for an assessment, but it's good just to have some background on how, how all of this stuff was discovered. All right, so let's take an example here. There's a car crash. One of the victims is losing a lot of blood. He's taken to the hospital. What do they do at the hospital? So you probably told me they give him some blood. If he's losing a lot of blood, they stitch him up, they take care of him, all of those correct. So if this victim needs blood, can they give him blood from anyone? Why or why not? It turns out they can't, okay? And they can't really give him blood from anyone. It has to be specific. We're gonna find out why. So we're gonna look at kind of the discovery of blood. So circulation of blood. A long, long time ago, they actually thought that the lungs pumped blood throughout your heart. And don't need to write any of this down, but in the 1600s, this guy, William Harvey, he actually discovered that it's the heart that pumps blood throughout the body. And he actually diagrams that it goes, you know, to different parts of your body and to the heart. And this is when they first start transfusing blood or giving blood from one person to another. In 1665, they first successfully did a blood transfusion. So they did it on doggies, <laughs> little dogs. So this is the first time they gave blood from one organism or one individual to another. 1667, they do transfusions from sheep to humans. And then um, in the 1800s, they try transfusing milk. So instead of actually doing blood from one organism to another, they transfuse milk from cows, goats, and humans into the bloodstream in an attempt to have their bodies create more blood. Then they're like, well, we can make it bigger and better. We can do this even better. We can use saline, salt water, um, to increase the blood supply. And this is because some people had some reactions to the milk and it wasn't very good. So this is still the 1800s. In the 1900s, this guy comes and he's like, hey, I think some people are compatible donating blood and some people aren't. And this is kind of when blood typing and matching becomes a thing. And we'll talk about blood typing and matching. So not until the 1900s. So this is what we would like to write down. So why can't we get blood from anyone? The reason is because our blood cells have antigens on them. And antigens are proteins that are on the surface of our red blood cells. All of us have proteins on the surface. If you have type O blood, you have fewer antigens. Um, type B, you've got B antigens. Type A, you've got A antigens. And AB, you've got A and B antigens. We're gonna make a little chart that's going to help us. So. This is our chart, I know it'll take a second. Um, you, these boxes do not need to be very big. We're just gonna write like a letter or two in them. Um, but I'm gonna have you pause the video right now and go ahead and copy down this chart. So now that you've got the chart copied down, we need to fill in the chart. So we're gonna fill in this top row here where it says antigens present. If we take a look at this picture, we see that type A blood has A antigens. So on our little chart here, we're gonna write down A for A antigens. They have A antigens. Type B, we're gonna write down B antigens. Type AB have A and B antigens. Type O has no antigens, none. So this is what your chart should look like, okay? The next thing we're gonna do is we are going to fill in these little pictures. These are red blood cells here. We're gonna fill them in showing the antigens. All right, so what you can do, 
copy down these pictures. You can do um, like unshaded triangles and shaded triangles to differentiate between A and B, or if you've got two different colors, you can do that. So take a second, pause the video, and go ahead and draw out those antigens on your blood cells. The next part of our chart says antibodies. So we need to know what the heck an antibody is. So write this down. This can just go below your chart or wherever you've got room. Antibodies are things that fight off things the body's not used to seeing. Fight off different antigens. So you hear, see here, here's a cell. It's got antigens, the proteins. And then an antibody, what it does is it binds to the antigen, and then it kind of tags it as, hey, this is foreign, it shouldn't be in our body. Okay, so if this is a bacteria cell, we're gonna make antibodies against this bacteria. If it's a bad bacteria, we're not supposed to have in our body. And these antibodies bind to it, and then they activate the immune system, and the antibody is kind of like a tag. It says, hey, over here, this shouldn't be here. So anything that's not normally in our body, our body's gonna make antibodies against. So let's take a look. Would someone with type A blood be used to be, would be, <laughs> be used to seeing A antigens in their body? So if you have type A blood, you've got all these blood cells, are you used to seeing the A antigens? Yes, you are, because you've got A antigens on all your blood cells. So you're used to seeing those A antigens. Would someone with type A be used to seeing B antigens? So someone with type A blood, would they be used to seeing B antigens? No, they wouldn't, right? Because they only have A antigens in their body. So someone with type A blood is gonna make antibodies against the B antigens because they're not used to seeing B antigens in their body. So in our little table here, we're gonna write anti-B. They are not used to seeing B antigens, so they're gonna make antibodies against B proteins because they think the B proteins are not supposed to be there. They're not something that they see all the time. So let's look at some of our other blood types then. Type B. Are they used to seeing B antigens? Yeah. Are they used to seeing A antigens? Nope. So these are gonna have anti-A antigens. So here's our table here. You'll notice I, I don't have the top part filled out, so just ignore that. <laughs> Anti-A. Type AB, they see A proteins and B proteins all the time, so they don't really have any antibodies against anything else. Type O, they're not used to seeing any proteins, any antigens, because there aren't any on their blood cells. So they're gonna make both A and B antibodies. So this directly goes into who they can receive blood from and who they can donate blood from. It all has to do with antibodies and antigens. So here's an example. A person has type A blood. Which types of blood can he or she receive? So they can only receive blood types that have antigens that they're used to seeing. So for example, AB. Well, it's got blue spikes. Person with type A is not used to seeing those blue B spikes, so they're not gonna be able to get this. What about A? Yep, it's got these orange triangles, orange triangles. Great, so they could get blood from a type A individual. What about type B? Are they used to seeing blue triangles, those B antigens? Nope, so they could, would not be able to get it from type B. What about O? No antigens. O is kind of like the stealth blood type, kind of goes undercover because it doesn't have any proteins. So someone with O blood can give their blood to anyone because there aren't proteins to recognize there that the body is going to say, oh my gosh, this is the wrong blood type, we're going to attack it. So let's write this down. We said that someone with type A could get blood from type A and type O. 
So we're going to fill in our chart. They can get it from type A and type O. Next up, we got to think about type B. Which types of blood could this person receive? So they can't receive AB because they don't have orange spikes. They're not used to seeing those. Can't get it from A, don't have orange spikes. They could get it from B, and they could get it from O because O doesn't have any. So we're going to go ahead and write down B and O. So you'll notice they can always get the same type that they are. So type A could get A blood, type B can get B blood. All right, what about AB blood? Which blood types can they receive? Type AB blood can get all of them. They recognize all of the uh, antigens, so they can get blood from all individuals. And last but not least, O. Which types of blood could someone with O receive? They would only be able to get blood from O individual, okay? All right, so now we're gonna look at donating. Someone with type A, can they donate to the following individuals? So again, we're looking at, if they're donating it, the person they're donating to, are they gonna recognize this A blood? And have they seen those A antigens before? So someone with AB blood, they could get A blood because they've seen those orange spikes. Someone with A blood can get blood from somebody with type A. Type B, have they seen those orange spikes before? Nope, so this would not work out. What about type O, they're used to seeing nothing and now they got these orange spikes, so that's not gonna work out either. So type A can donate to somebody who's got A or AB blood. Let's look at type B. Which ones would they be able to donate to? And remember, the people they're donating to have to be able to recognize these B antigens. So they'd be able to donate to AB because they recognize the blue spikes. This isn't going to work because they don't recognize the person with type A blood is not going to recognize the B antigens. B to B, that works. B to O, O doesn't have any. They're not going to recognize these blue spikes. So someone with type B blood can donate to B or AB. And notice, they can donate to blood types that have the same letters as they do. How about someone with type AB? So they can obviously donate to somebody with the same type. Here, are they giving them any new antigens? Yeah, they're giving them the blue ones. These guys aren't used to seeing the blue ones. Are they giving them any, any new antigens here? Yep, they're giving them the orange ones. That's not gonna work. What about here, are they giving them any new antigens? Yeah, we're not used to seeing any of these. So with AB, they can only donate to individuals with AB blood. And last but not least, O. Are they giving them any new antigens? Since O doesn't have any antigens, remember O is like the undercover, it can donate to anybody because the body's not going to fight any of the antigens on the O blood type because there aren't any antigens. So you'll notice we have all listed here and all listed here. So type O is what we call a universal donor because it can donate to anyone. Type AB is what we call a universal recipient because they can receive blood from anyone. Now we have to get into RH. We are almost done, so hang with me. So what about the pluses and minus? We talked about this with blood type back in genetics. So RH positive means they have an extra protein called the RH factor. RH negative means they are missing that protein. So if we go back to our universal donor, our universal recipient, we have to add the pluses and minuses to those. So the universal donor is O negative. 
O negative does not have any antigens on its blood cell. So I just put this picture in here. So you can see the universal donor is O negative because it doesn't have any antigens. So it can be donated to anyone and they're not going to say, oh, this antigen's one we haven't seen because there aren't any. And then the universal recipient is AB positive because it can receive blood from anyone because it already has all of the proteins already on it, all of the antigens. So there can't be any other antigen that somebody would give it that would cause it to be foreign. So these are just um, some blood types. You can see A positive and O positive are the most common blood types um, in the United States. So let's do a practice. Can someone with A positive blood give blood to someone with A negative blood? So what you have to look at, the person getting it, are they getting any new things that they don't already have? And they are. They're going to be getting this plus, this Rh positive antigen, and their body's going to make, make antibodies against that. So this would not work. What about the other way around? A negative to A positive. So again, look at the recipient. Are they getting anything that they're not used to having already? No, they're not getting anything they're not used to having, so this would work. Last but not least, um, just something I want to touch on. There can be problems in pregnancy. So if we think about our Punnett square, it's possible that you have a baby that's Rh positive and you as a mom are Rh negative. Because remember, positive is dominant. <clears throat> so the dad might be positive, and so the baby might be Rh positive. And the problem with this is that the mom is not used to seeing that positive antigen. And so it actually creates antibodies against this Rh positive and can cause problems. Because we don't want the antibodies attacking this fetus. It's called erythroblastus fatalis. Um, and so if they identify that the baby's Rh positive and the mom is Rh negative, they end up taking, the mom ends up taking medicine um, just to prevent the antibodies from attacking the baby.